I'm going to put Allie on the spot real quick because, you know, the, you got the powerhouse real estate agent. You got the powerhouse lender here. The question is, what do you hate that every lender does? What do you hate? What is the worst trait in a, in a lender? Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's time for another hashtag closing day podcast where we interview some of the top performers. I'm talking about beasts in real estate that know the importance of how to close a deal. And we're sitting here today, not just with my beautiful wife, Allie Wise, who you all know, love, hey, and hey, respect. Hey. I have to say that it's in the contract. <laughs> I have to say my beautiful wife, Allie, she literally wrote it out. You should see the writer, the amount of- Lies details that she needs that she requires but we're here with an ultimate dallas closer brian mccauley's with us today what's up brother how are you man i'm good man you I, first of all i just admire your level of effort and energy that you're putting in to your online activity the content that i'm seeing come from you like i feel like we're moving fast and then whenever we're working together because we have this big event in dallas that we're doing we're meeting real estate agents i feel like we get on the phone with you and i'm like man i need to catch up to brian when do you sleep how do you sleep I, i'm all of an old soul i go to bed at like nine o'clock and okay get up at five that's the secret it's a secret okay that's it because by the time i go home i'm so worn out from going on the grind i got nothing else to give well what is that grind because they're right now the closing day podcast we've got a lot of real estate agents we got lenders we've got all kinds of real estate professionals some very experienced. Mm -hmm. I know a few of them right now that are listening that are top 30, 50, $80 million producers. And yeah. I know some that are brand new that can't even get their first deal. Right. So when you talk about the success you've created, and I know I asked you this earlier on Instagram live, would you equate your success in the Dallas market? And by the way, I'm not just saying he's successful because he's on our podcast. When I talk, this is how I measure success. Mm -hmm. When I talk to other high performers, they know you. And if they know you, I know you're in those circles. So I know that you equate and you run in circles of high performers. Would you say that it's the time and experience that you spent in Dallas that makes you successful? Because you've been here. You said you went right into this career, right? Yeah. I mean, I think doing your thing, whether it's like business, athletics, or whatever, when you stay in the game for a long period of time, it helps your exposure. You meet a lot of people. You get in a lot of circles and you just chop the wood for a long period of time. So making those connections and staying in the space, I think, is the first piece that people have to realize, like, very rarely are you going to become an overnight success. Now, I'm going to put Allie on the spot real quick mm -hmm. because, you know, the, you got the powerhouse real estate agent. You got the powerhouse lender here. The question is, what do you hate that every lender does? What do you hate? What is the worst trait in a, in a lender? Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a list this long. We should do uh, where you write it down and then I read and see if Correct. you have the same one. Yeah. What is the worst thing that a lender does? Well, this is really actually a difficult question because Brian works for a company that has a very high level of standards with something that's super important to me. Yeah. So I know that this is something that Brian specifically doesn't do yeah. that I have experience with a handful, okay. like many. I just handfuls. want so it's like, if there's some new, if there's some new entrepreneurs listening, I want them to hear the bad experiences and then how Brian has transformed his career. So can you give me some examples? Communication. It's the worst. Lack of communication. Really? Yes. And so would you say that is one of the value propositions of how you've pried yourself and how you run your business? Yeah. yeah. I think the two hallmarks I hear from agents most often, the problem with lending is there's too many big surprises and there's not enough communication. Huh. What and are the surprises? People. Anything. Not, yeah. Well, people, number one, people not knowing the guidelines. Like uh -huh. you got to know what you're doing. Mortgages are very, very regulated. There's a ton of teeth. Yeah. So it's like people equate getting a house like they equate getting a car. Car has no regulation. So you walk on the lot, do your thing, say whatever, minimal paperwork, you're out with the keys in five hours. Wow. So they think, oh, $75,000 car, $500,000 house, same component. Yeah. I don't really have to dig in deep. So lenders don't understand the rules. They don't dig in deep and it costs their business partner and costs the client on the back end. And that's where they get frustrated. The communication piece is they're always reactive. They're not proactive. Got it. And they and don't it, know how to message it. And it doesn't matter that the client, they could have purchased before or they could be first time home buyers. That's like one of the things I tell my clients all the time is I'm here to help hold your hand as loosely or tightly as you need me to. That's part of what we're going to, you know, learn through the, the first week or so of this process together yeah. and, and figuring each other out, building that relationship making it more than just a transaction. And like Brian said, there's so many regulations. The difference with Brian's is that a lot of his have really strict timelines 
and they are more federally regulated. Yeah. Ours are, we have timelines too, but a lot of them are specific to whatever MLS we're licensed in or whatever state we're in. So it might not be so much, I mean, sure there's federal fair housing laws that we have to adhere to, but Brian's got RESPA to adhere to and closing documents that have to be sent out exactly so many days prior to, you know, closing. It's like, what if closing gets moved up? Mm then you've just missed your window. Or what if closing gets pushed back? You know, there's just, it's, you you are kind of walking on eggshells a lot. And that just comes from experience and time. I mean, 50% of what I learned is just eating the curb. Yeah. Didn't know this little secret rule, page 455, like, ah. And you learn that and you break your own heart and you break their heart. And then over time, you're almost kind of like, for a good analogy, like an attorney. Like Mm. they learn the law through and through. They learn the interpretations, the dark spots, the spirit and the way to work through it. Loan guidelines are similar, and what happens is you have to know the rules first so you don't stub your toe. Love it. Then you gotta communicate. And then after that, you gotta find realtors. I think a big thing, lenders and realtors, is everybody works together. Like, dude, you gotta date the person, make sure they're a good fit. What's most important about a lender? What are deal breakers? This, that, and the other, to get on the same page. And then we have to make sure that we don't screw it up and we communicate well, because honestly, they provide us clients a lot more and those good partnerships are unbreakable and they're awesome, but you just gotta be authentic and upfront just to protect, because I mean, like she mentioned, they're federal. So you're moving from, in theory, Wells, the Bank of America, whatever, the rules aren't changing. It's the guideline books that look like phone books. It's the person that mm. knows them all the way through in a split second and can deliver the message well and connect with the client is the one that's like, mm, I, I like that person and why? And the realtors know too, because they've had so many bad dates and so many sour spots, it's yeah. killed their time and energy, killed their commissions and made them look bad to the client because we're an extension of them. For sure. They're just trying to protect that and make sure they connect with the right mortgage partner. Well, if you're taking notes, you're watching this or you're listening to this right now, I heard reactive versus proactive. Yep. And so I think that's what it really boils down to. That's what I took away from this conversation. So I'm glad I could set it up. Now I'm going to put you on the spot. Are you ready? Let's do it, yeah. What do you hate about working with agents? What, do, what are agents bad habits? I know you and I were talking about atomic habits where mm-hmm. we were both read that book. You listen to the podcast. What habits do agents have that if they're listed, they're young agent right now, yeah. or maybe they're experienced and they do this. Yeah. Like what, what advice would you give to agents on working with lenders? Better? I could name a couple I'm probably guilty For of. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do I it. mean, it's, it's, it varies per person. I would say if I'm doing a general piece of it, it's just that my preference is for my realtor partners to not skip steps mm. on the pre-approval pr- process. Okay. That's the one thing, right? It's you don't want to skip steps. When you skip steps, there usually ends up being blood. Mm. And lenders only like pull you back and say, oh, I'm not sure about the self-employed person stuff here and there. Not because we just don't want to check the box and roll too. We're just mentally aware of the booby traps. Yep. And we can see like peek around the corner because we know where that guideline says like this, that, and the other. And obviously sometimes, you know, agents aren't aware of the regulation or they're in a hurry or even they know what the rules are, but they're being emotionally pushed by the client Mm. and they don't want to tick them off. So it's this like, do I, do I don't? Because Mm. if they push too hard, they can go elsewhere. Right. Because a good agent educates their client, straight up, not not under the guise of just trying to keep them happy. I would say skipping steps is probably the other one. And then, I mean, not for her and for anybody that's experienced, but just disrespecting lenders or teams that commoditize them. Oh yeah. yeah. They they commoditize people and they use them and they think like everybody is just an online. Like they work for them or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's also too sometimes respect because lenders don't provide enough value. If all you do is take an application, send it a piece of paper, dude, yeah. you're dead. Wow. You gotta do it the right way. You gotta have reciprocity. You gotta open more doors for your partner. You gotta put money back in their pocket. Dude, this is a master class you're giving right, right now. Straight this up. is oh, crazy. There's so much good information. But well, yeah. that comes from good coaching, that comes from experience, that's coming from having good partners. Just over time that wisdom yeah. will help you. Well, we jumped right into the professional side of things. I think, you know, for Allie and I, we really personally went through our own transformation where we started working. First of all, we're a working couple, which is a crazy. new challenge, a new crazy challenge. Just for the for record, us. I'm married to a realtor. It's how we met. Oh, so really? <laughs> so, do you guys do deals together? Yeah, of course. Oh, so you, so that's how we so met. You, so you understand the joy and the pain, of course, of, of what course. we're going through. To be married to me and be married to a mortgage guy, you're going to be extremely patient. Or in the business, she's both. Wow, which is good. You yeah. really nailed it. That's nailed it. huge. Love it. Yeah. Well, so f- uh, on the personal side. You know, when we talk to someone who's a high performer, closing deals, you know, there's always a personal commitment that they've made. There's, you know, and and they're not always the same. It's just like you live and breathe and believe in something that's different from other lenders in town. Now, obviously you have 
your quality filters and metrics and you've got your value propositions on the business side, but what is a day in the life? Like what are the things that you do that you believe are different from anyone else? And that's why you're able to perform at a higher level. Yeah. I mean, you want to start off with buying a house. People don't think about it this way. It's the biggest purchase and investment of their life. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else anybody can say that, Hey, I bought that and it costs more money for most people. Mm -hmm. So you got to pay extra attention to it. The second part is you have to educate people not on being homeowners, on being smart homeowners. Mm -hmm. I'm a certified mortgage planner as well, so I spent two years catching up on game of six steps to financial freedom, mm -hmm. wealth accumulation, knowing how to run a budget, mm -hmm. financial strategy. So weaving those things into the home buying process and saying, hey, I'm going to teach you how to buy a house and show you how to create wealth mm. versus like, let me give you a piece of paper and get the keys. And there's yeah. so many pieces outside of that application piece that matter. So trying to weave that in to the mortgage planning session, educate people, get it all done is step one. Step two is showing people that you actually care. People are doing like, they're just hurrying through it. They're not spending time. They're not asking why. Why do you want to be a homeowner? What are your financial goals? What are your fears? Why do you see your kids here and there? It's like, hey, what's your credit score? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, stop checking the box. Right. Lean into the people. Just like if you're on the other side of the conversation, we all know when people have leaned into us or you can feel like they're in a hurry or not professional. Yeah. That's the other piece. And I think those two, from a mortgage standpoint, um, the financial education piece and the leaning into people and figuring out how to weave all this together for the best experience and the best financial plan is what I like the most about the mortgage aspect. Nice. And nice. the financial piece goes hand in hand with the relationship side sure. of it because the last thing you want, especially to help, say, a first time home buyer, right. whether it's a single person or, or a couple or whatever, is for them six months or a year down the road when you go to check in and say, hey, how's everything going? Because that's probably somewhere in your cadence as far as like, sure. hey, do you want to refi, et cetera, um, is for them to blame you mm -hmm. that their, you know, house broke right? because they bought a house that they can't afford yep. because they didn't take the necessary steps. So that education piece that you're teaching them is so huge because in six months to a year, they can say, everything's great. Oh, yeah. We're not only loving life and loving our home, but we're saving money and we've got equity and we're able to put investments over here and over there totally. that are totally unrelated to and the that's house. that's how you create a client for life as well on those two pieces. I, I run everybody through the financial freedom and the personal budget. I explain to them good debt and bad debt. I explain to them the way to create wealth is through cash flow yep. and understand like, hey, if you got 50 grand in the bank, putting 25 on a house is going to save you 125 a month. Take that 25, pay off the car. Now you're done with that note, 500. Same amount of debt, different place. Plus 350 over here. Minus 150 over there. Houses go up in value, cars go down. Yep. You get tax deductions on the mortgage payment, you get none on the car. Like those things together create a space for people when they lay their head on the pillow to go, that was the best move. And this is how you check in. Not during COVID, because we couldn't get face to face, but I usually do two wealth workshops a year, mm. bringing all the past clients and say, dude, I got you in debt. I'm gonna show you how to get out. Nice. Here's what I do for myself and why. When are we doing one? As soon as we get back to normal, which is right around the corner. Yeah, let's go, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm eager. I'm going to have like set a date. 600 people from last year come, but I love Dude, it. Dude, let's go. I'd love that. Yeah. Uh, I'm awesome. going to ask you a question here in just a moment. I wanna, this is called a tease, okay. if you're following. I'm going ha to have you look in your crystal ball okay. and talk about the future of real estate as a whole. Because we actually, believe it or not, Allie gets a lot of like stay-at-home moms, teachers, nurses that are just looking for bigger, better, more freedom opportunity in their mm -hmm. life career change and so and so i know they're listening right now so i'm gonna ask you to look into the crystal ball but before i do something that's on my mind as i see you continue to have more success is this going to be your best year ever yes and what do you attribute what goals did you put in place or why is this the best year that you've ever had i mean the best year is because i mean at this level it's a team game mm. that's it so they explain, an, unpack that. What does so that mean? unpacking that means like no matter how good you are as a lender or no matter how good you are as an agent, yeah. you only have so much capacity. Mm. There are only so many hours in the day. You can be the literally number one in the world, but you can't touch a 10 person team. Wow. You can't touch a 50 person team. Yeah. Um, it's, how do you, know, you do a lender right now? Listening agent right now, listening. I got nobody. How I mean, do they, how do they get there? Yeah. I mean, I, I think you can talk to professional people like y'all. You mm -hmm. can talk to professional coaches. Everybody has a metric saying like, Hey, when you close this many deals, this is where you kind of weave in a teammate. Mm -hmm. You got to figure out too. One of the things that lenders and realtors are really, really bad at is highest and best use of time. Mm. They're very busy, but they're not productive. Mm. If they make $100 an hour, everything you do that's not $100 an hour, you hire somebody. Gotcha. So if you're doing marketing flyers and dropping escrow checks off, like cool, but if that eats up three of your hours a day, like no, no, no. 
you're in sales, do sales stuff, yeah. prospect here and there. And so they start to break out roles and responsibilities, Got it. hire accordingly. And then as you get bigger, people start to cross train. So it's like karate. I teach you karate, you teach her karate, and then the people start coming to the dojo. That's the way to do it. it. That's, it. That's it. That's why the team game's good, but people go out of town, they get sick here and there. You got such a deep dugout yeah. and a good energy of people. That's yeah. how you replicate. I love so that true. philosophy. It's such a great philosophy. So here's the big question then. Where is the future of real estate? And is it a good time? Are we still in the early phases or is it already too saturated and there's no chance somebody should get into real estate no they can get in i mean the the the, the good side and the downside to lending and being an agent is there are really no high standards to get in so you don't have to go to medical school or law school for four years so it doesn't discourage people like man that's a hard road to get in so mm -hmm. people like her that are built for it and born for it mm -hmm. the barriers of entry are low so they can get in and kick the doors open yeah so if somebody's serious about it and they want a career out of it yeah anyone can get in and then it just becomes a competition of like get on the field mm -hmm. let me see your mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. let me do your personal branding let me get it going yeah because the market is the market if you want to be a hobbyist and do it part time, that's available as well. Yeah. But no, I think it's a, it's a business and an industry that's constantly open to growth and it's constantly like real estate and lending is like fitness. If you want to go seven days a week and go all in hard in the paint, eat yeah. everything, it'll pay you back. There's no restriction, but you got to be willing to do it. And it, because it's a lot harder than people think that turnover is very high. It flushes people out. Yeah. So the top people usually stay at the top and keep going. Eventually people work their way up, but there's always room for people to get in when they're ready. I love that advice. And then I'm going to ask a question on Allie's behalf. She's in Florida. She's in Arizona. She's in Oregon, Washington. She's going to get that license in Texas. Now let's say she's got two team members right now in Texas. She's going to move here in January. You own this market. Anyone in Dallas knows who you are. You've probably worked with thousands of agents at this point. The question for Allie is what is as wise property group comes into Texas. Right. What's the first move as we come into a, a market that's moving so fast? What, how do we build equity in a market like this? What's the first How step? do we kick the door open before we're actually here? Yeah, I think two things, right? Finding a business partner that's here and local that already has those tentacles and connections with builders, CPAs, mm -hmm. clients here and there, like myself, will be mm -hmm. a jump start, right? Well, we're off to a good start. Right. <laughs> I think where you guys decide to live and end up putting your stake in the ground is a big piece. Because yeah. your neighbors will like you. you we guys were just talking about energy. that, yeah. Where do we where do we move? Right. It's a big deal. I see yeah. a lot of people have success in their own backyard yeah. because they're likable. People relate to them. The kids are playing. Get right? in the churches. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Get, get in get all of them. Yeah. Get in there. Shake yeah. hands. See your people. See what's up. But I think networking with people that are already local Huge. here and they like you and yeah. trust you, they get you off to a jump start quicker. Just like if I was going to y'all's backyard and say, hey, I know how to do a mortgage and talk to people, but I don't know where to start. And right. I'm going to yeah. say, give me your top 10 hit list on how to jump started to get it going For organically, sure. that would be the best piece of advice from the jump. Love it, man. What's the Instagram for anybody that wants more advice, more wisdom? I know you spit a lot of wisdom on your Instagram. Where should they follow you? At Dallas Mortgage Man. At Dallas Mortgage Man. If you don't follow him, it's a disservice. So make sure that you go follow, make sure that you like and comment, reach out, say hi, especially hashtag Dallas Realtors. If you don't know him, you need to know him, get more business done and get it done with somebody that knows the regulation, understands the process. He doesn't just have the experience, but he's also got the communication, which Ali says is really Huge. important. Huge. So he's got it. Thank you very much, brother. Appreciate, Appreciate it, man. It. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Good to um, see you guys. Allie, I have to say this before we close, is the most beautiful, successful wife, and I love her, and uh, we're going to have this more babies. This is not in the contract. No? He just 